Hi, my name is Kelly and welcome to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, this is the channel that's all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva and soon to be everything else print-on-demand. If that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and stick around. Bye. <laughs> so in today's video, we are going to be going over how to make this design right here. It says Happy Easter and it has three bunnies. Each of these bunnies is a, um, a custom frame that we've gone ahead and then put a photo in. So I'm going to be going over how to create custom frames and then how to go ahead and match your text color to colors within your image using an eyedropper feature. So if this is something that you're interested in, please stick around. Also, if you're curious how we create these, um, these thumbnails, I went ahead and bought this t-shirt graphic off of Etsy. So you can do a search for templates, um, t-shirt templates. This is a Gildan um, and there's all sorts of different uh, styles that you can look for. You buy your templates and then all you can do is just save your image, put it right on top and then you've saved your thumbnail just like that. And it's a great way if you're selling on Etsy to make your shop look a little bit more professional. So. If you're willing to spend the money, it's definitely worth it. So once you've opened your Canva account, we're going to go ahead and open a new blank project. Now, normally I would select a 4,500 by 5,400 uh, frame because that's how I design all my t-shirts. To create a custom frame though, we're going to want to start with a smaller size. The reason being is that we're going to have to download it as a PDF and upload it into Word document, and it's going to be too large at that size. So we're gonna go ahead and just put custom size. And for this, I'm just gonna pick something small, 200 by 200 pixels. So once I have my page open, you'll see it's just a small square, 200 by 200 pixels. I'm still gonna go ahead and come up to the corner. I'm gonna select the background color. I'm gonna pick black. Then I'm going to go ahead and um, select my elements. Now for this, I'm going to use a few bunnies. So I've already searched for bunnies and found the ones that I like. You can use any frame you want as long as you have the ability to change the color. So you'll see here I have the ability to change the color of the bunny. Um, so you can pick any type of silhouette that you like to make frames out of. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick these. I'm gonna switch this one because I'm gonna do it something like that. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger. For this example, I do want them all to be the same size and I want them to be relatively evenly spaced. There we go. So I've got my frames in every single one of them. I can go ahead and change the color on and so that's important. So now all we're gonna do is download this as a PDF, as a standard PDF. So I'm gonna go ahead and title it and I'm gonna title this bunny frame. Um, template. So bunny frame template. And I'm gonna come up here to the corner. I'm going to hit download. And for this one, instead of a PNG, we're just gonna go ahead and do PDF standard. So we're gonna hit download. There we go. And now once we've downloaded it, we can go ahead and just close this out entirely. So we'll close that and now we are gonna pull up a Word document. So you're gonna to wanna to open Word and pull up a blank document. And once we have our blank document open, we're gonna go ahead and go to File. Over here, we're gonna go ahead and go to Open. Now you can go ahead and do Folders, Downloads, you can open that. And now you will scroll down. I've got several things up here, but you're going to scroll down and find the design that you just saved. So PDF bunny frame template. This is the one I just made and it is going to pull it up. Now you'll get this. It'll say word will now convert your PDF to an editable word document. And you're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, if you get any error that says that your image is too large, it's because you've created it on too large of a, um, a template. So if you use the standard 4,500 by 5,400, it won't open. It'll say that it's too large, which is why I designed it on a 200 by 200. It's okay, we can change this once we get back into Canva. 
So from here, we're gonna go ahead and click on the bunny. And when we click on a bunny, it's gonna say shape format. So we can click that and we'll go to shape fill. So now when we hit shape fill, you'll have the option to fill the shape with different gradients, pictures. We're gonna to wanna to fill with a picture, shape fill. Now you can use any picture that you want. It doesn't matter because it's just gonna be a place saver. So literally anything that you have saved on your computer, you can go ahead and put in. So if it pulls up your photos, just pick any photo you like, doesn't matter, and insert it. From a photo, let's do a different picture, any different picture. Insert, there we go. So I'm gonna to have to do this one bunny at a time. So click on your next bunny and we're gonna do it again. Shape fill, picture, from file. Again, doesn't matter, pick any picture you want. Scroll down and insert. And then one more time, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead, shape fill, picture, from file. Any picture, doesn't matter. Insert. Okay, now once you have your pictures inserted so that we can see that we have three distinct frames, now you could go through and also do the tails. I'm not as concerned with the tails because I'm gonna do something different with that. But once I have it the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, download this as a PDF. So I'll come up here and I will save the image. And it says Word document. We're gonna save it here as a PDF. Down. All the way to the right, you'll see import file. So here's where we can import our PDF. So if you click import file, we go to our downloads. It should be right at the top, bunny frame template after. I am gonna go ahead and open that. And down here, I scroll down and here it is. So now I can click on this and we can open it. Perfect, I know it looks a little bit silly, but again, we're gonna be able to edit all of this out. So for example, I can click the background and I can just go ahead and whoop. So once we've gotten rid of the background, you can select anything that you want um, to go inside the bunnies. So for example, come up to elements and we're gonna fill these in just like we would any other frame. So we're gonna select pictures. For this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do some leopard print. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select photos and then I can pick different colors of leopard print. So for example, you can see I can just fill that in. And if I don't like it, I can pick another one and I can just go through, I kind of like that. It's a little dark, maybe I like that one and select the one that you want. Next, I think I'm gonna go with a white one in the middle. I like the white. And then, oh, I kind of like the pink. Lots of different shades here that I can work with. Ooh, actually, I like this one here. Ooh, that's pretty. Some reddish, some pinkish. Hoping for something a little pinkish. There you go, there's some different ones. So, I mean, you can play around. Now, as you can see, the, the tails here can also be edited. So if I wanted to, I could put in a whole nother picture for the tail, for example. Oops, right there. And so you could do that for each individual tail as well. Now the tails, I just wanna make white and I'll show you why in a second. But just scrolling to see if there's any other options I like better. Ooh, that one, I like this one. That's the one I want. That's pretty, okay. So I've got my three leopard prints. And again, the tails I can do whatever I want with. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and make these white. And I'll show you why in a minute, but that's what I'm gonna do. Perfect. So now right now we're on a 200 by 200 um, pixel backdrop and we wanna go ahead and make this um, larger. So we do wanna change the size now for our t-shirt size so we can go up to resize. And we can go ahead and switch this to 4,500 by 5,400. And I'm just gonna click resize here. Okay. 
So now what you'll see is our square has not filled the entire frame. That's okay. I can do that. Perfect. Now here I can, I can group these. So if I want to group them, oop, that's not working. Let me lock in my background so I can go ahead and lock. Once the background is locked, I can now group the bunnies if I want to, and I can move all of the bunnies together as one. And so I can make them as big as I want, as small as I can want, and I can put them anywhere within the, um, the image that I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it there. Now, once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lock each one of these bunnies in place so that I don't accidentally move them. actually going to go ahead and lock the tail too and I'll show you why. I'm going to go ahead and put a little puff in front of the tail. And so now if I go up to elements, I am now going to be looking for a, I'm just going to put puff because I want a puffy tail. Oops, I'm going to hit graphics. Now you've got all sorts of little puff graphics. So I'm looking for something that kind of looks like a bunny tail. So if I click here, it's going to pull up some magic recommendations. So I kind of like these. I'm going to get rid of that one because I kind of want a white one. So, or a round one, sorry. So this is good. I can make it a little bit smaller. And I can kind of stick it right there. And I can make it a little bit bigger so that it sort of comes off the edges. I can duplicate it if I hit Control D a couple times and I've got a couple copies and I can put it and line it up with the other bunnies. I'm also gonna do one of these. So this one you can see is much puffier. And if I make this one big enough, it is going to give just a little bit of a puff look around the outside. So it does kind of look like a bunny tail. I can make it bigger too until I get it right around how I like it. Once I have it how I like it, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that too. So control D a couple more times. And I can kind of get it however I like it there. Something like that. So now I've got my bunnies, they got their little puffy tails. I do want to put some script up here. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go with some text. Now I can hit T, it'll pull up a text box. And so that I can see and I'm just going to go with a white text for now. I'm going to bring it up here. And for this, I'm just going to write Happy Easter. Pretty simple. Good. I'm going to make it bigger. And then we're going to go ahead and select a font. I am going to go with a script font. So if I go with script, I can now search through and find different fonts that I like. And you can see there's a lot of different ones again to choose from. And so you can play with it, select anything you want. Um, if you know the name of the one you want, you can type it up here. I do. I'm going to go with vintage um, goods. Vintage goods right here. And so that is the one I want to go with. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. Center it. All right. So I like the way that looks. Now I can leave it white or I can do a different color. So let's say I want to do a color and I kind of want it to match the bunny. I can come up to color, select color, and there's a little eyedropper here now. This is cool. If I hit the eyedropper, I can just hover over anywhere on the design I like and select the color from the design. So let's say I want this pink color. And there we go. Now I can match one of the shades of pink. And so that's a really cool feature that you can literally match any color within your design. Um, so now I have my design. It says Happy Easter. I've got my three bunnies, which I made custom frames, my puffy tail. I can go ahead now and save this as uh, bunny, bunnies, however you want, happy Easter, bunny, happy Easter, <laughs> however you want to title it. 
all complete. Now there is one more step if you want to have a clear background. Um, right now the black is actually part of the image. So if we were to download it, it would still download it with this black image um, or with this black background. So assuming you want to get rid of the black background and do your normal transparent black background, we're just going to drag the black out of the way. So if you see, I can take this, I can pick it up and I can just move the black background right off. And there you go. Now you have your happy Easter. Now, if you go ahead and download it um, as a, um, a PNG with a transparent background, you won't get that black background. Now, of course, if you wanna see how it looks on different colors, now we can go ahead back here and we can change the background and you can kind of just see how that would look with different colors. Okay. But now if we go ahead and download it, we can still download it and get that clear, transparent background that we want, okay? So if we come up here and we just go to download, we keep our PNG, we do our transparent background and it will only save now just our images. And so we hit download and that is it. And that is how you can create your own custom, uh, custom frames for any occasion. So if you ever have, um, holidays where you want to be able to put different uh, images within a custom frame. This is one way that you can do it. There are a few other ways, but I find that this one is pretty simple and it, it requires the least amount of effort. Let's just put it like that. So if you like this video, um, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.